Father, we thank you. We bless you for this time, for this occasion. Bless us. Equip us. Let us know you well. Lead us in your precious word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm talking to you on the subject, a woman, my woman. A woman, my woman. A woman, my woman. Amen. Amen. Okay, first Samuel chapter 25. Because of time, I'll just read a bit. It was a long story, and I'll tell you the story as we progress. Samuel died. The whole country came to his funeral. I'm reading the Message Bible. Everyone grieved over his death and was buried in his hometown of Ramah. Meanwhile, David moved again, this time to the wilderness of Maon. Two, there was a certain man in Maon who carried on his business in the region of Camel. He was very prosperous. 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. It was a sheep rearing time in Camel. This man's name was Nabal, which is a fool, a Calabite. And his wife's name was Abigail. The woman was intelligent, good looking, the man brutish and mean. Now, let's look at two things. The, the woman was what? The, let's look at the character of the woman compared to the character of the man. The woman was what? And then the next thing was that he was what? Men are looking for good looking women who are not intelligent. The woman was intelligent and good looking and the man was brutish and mean. Now let's go to King James Version. Now, yeah, okay. Now the name of the man was what? Nabal. And the name of his wife was Abigail. And it is summarized in this way. This is their character. These two people, this is their character. She was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was childish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. Now, are we ready? I said I'm talking to you and I said you're a woman, my Every woman is not your woman. That's where I start from. Every woman is not your woman. You must be able to, or we in this world, if we are talking about women this month, every man or everybody must be able to differentiate between who is a woman and who is my woman. If every woman can be your woman or my woman, then we should marry everybody. That is why the Bible never said a woman should submit to a man. And that's what people quote, every woman should submit to a man. And that's why in, every, in most cultures, every woman bows to every man, no matter what. That's why somebody said the wife belongs to the kitchen. <laughs> and the bedroom. Uh, I wonder. Kitchen and bedroom. Well, not in this 21st century. And, amen? Oh, amen. amen. The way you are looking at me, you are making me pause more small. small. Because the women are aggressive than even the men. Okay, let me go on. That is why the Bible says each woman, um, 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 uh, a wife must submit to his own husband. So a woman, let me use the word, cannot submit to every man. It is difficult for a woman to submit to every man. A woman submits to his own husband. And let me say something again before I continue. 
most of the people talk about it that a woman submits to a man and a man submits to God. That is a little bit, is true, but I think people take it out of context. What I believe is that both submit to God. Whether, <coughs> did the men hear that? Whether the man is submitting to God and the woman is submitting to the man, the woman is submitting to the man because the man is submitting to God. So the issue is that both are submitting to God. Now when it becomes like both man and woman, are both husband and wife, are submitting to God, there's no rule. There is nothing like this is the man's rule and this is the woman's rule. The rule is God's rule. So when the woman knows that the rule you are bringing to the house is God's rule, then the woman can easily submit to the rule. But when the rule is your... And interestingly, most men do not know the rules of God. Is it true? I like the way you are quiet. I repeat it. Most men do not know the rules of God. In the average home, the people who are very spiritual and going to church a lot and reading the Bible a lot are women. Is it true it's not true? Now, because most women are reading the word of God a lot and most men are not, most often, most men don't even understand how to submit to God. So the issue here is that both parties are expected to submit to the authority of God. Let's leave the man thing out. Let's leave the woman thing out. That whole, the whole thing is that we are both submitting to the rule of God. And what is the rule of God? What does God say concerning relationship? What does God say concerning man? Now, I'm not going to talk about marriage today, really. I want us to look at certain characters of women. But it cannot be, if you don't, it's like, it's like women are believing these days that uh, they can live without a man. And that is one of the lies from the pit of hell. I like the way you are quiet. Quote me anytime. It is one big deception by the devil. You see, most of it, before the devil will ever move, the devil will destroy things and make it look like it is not useful. Now, in the story we are just reading, people say that Nabal was a fool. But Nabal was a fool, but not in two areas. In business, he was a successful businessman. <laughs> in making a choice in marriage, he chose the right woman. So his foolishness was not really foolishness per se. The guy was wise, but he was a fool. Now, every man, please listen to me. If you make a mistake at all, don't be a fool in business and don't be a fool in marriage. You can be a fool in other way. <laughs> when Jimmy Crown, now you will seek us. Now you will worry. I don't know how a foolish man like Naba would choose such a woman like Abigail. You see, we always see him not about a fool, not about a fool, but look, let's be very practical here. So far, this man is not a fool. Well, are you here or you are not here? Yeah, yeah. A man who has big business, 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and David, yet to be a bad king, is angry and is about to go and kill him because he asked him for some and he didn't give him. That is a rich man. The Bible calls him rich. But he was rich, knew how to look for a good woman to marry, and yet was a fool. I heard Pastor Daniel say this. Is it interesting that we've heard this in Ma Epe in Guasiafo?
That's another topic for another day. <laughs> so let me use the word, word Abigail Pe Kwashianaba. <laughs> with all the business brain, with all the business brain, with all the intelligence that this man had, in the sight of the world, he was a fool. But yet he got a wife that later David married, and David was the second hand. Nabal is not really a fool like we think he is. He's a fool in absence of the role of the woman in her life. Nabal was a fool because he was married to an intelligent woman, but was not in league, was not in relationship with that intelligent woman. That made her a fool. And I'll explain. Should I end now? By the way, Pastor Charles is thinking. <laughs> Can I go on? Look at somebody and say, do you know a woman? Do you have your woman? Now, I always quote this whenever I'm talking about women. The original, if you want to go to anything and you want to know why, you must go to the origin or the reason for the makeup. Purpose is the reason for being. Whenever somebody says why, you answer with because. Why? Because. Why? Because. Why are you here? Because. Why are you having eyes? Because. Why are you having ears? Why are you wanting to marry? Why? Because. So now, why did God make a woman? God made a woman because he realized that man was not able to discover what was in him. Womanhood was already in man. But man was not discovering it. Man was still lonely. Man was still what? I didn't hear you. Man was so what? And womanhood was already in what? Man, man had already gotten a womb in him. But God realized that Adam was not seeing that woman. So God said to Adam, sleep. Adam slept. And before Adam could sleep, God said in Genesis 2.18, I will make for him a help meet. Genesis 2.18, help meet. I always say that don't spell it help mate. Women are not mates. They are meat. M E E T. Meat. Help meat. Two great words. Help and meat put together. In other words, the woman is coming into a man's life to help him, to meet him at the point of his need. So. If a woman is however beautiful or whatever intelligent, however smart, and that woman is not helping you to be who you are as a man, that is a woman, but that is not your woman. comes to helping you, everybody can help you. True or false? Help. Do you know something? One of the greatest needs of a man is help. That is why our women here, God gave women some things that men don't have. They have endurance. You know what God took out of man? The ability to handle a baby for nine months was taken out of us and given to a woman. So a woman has the grace to handle pain and everything for nine months. That thing was taken from us and was given to them. So they have the ability to endure and go through things better than men. Let's not forget, it was first for us. I was teaching somewhere and I said that somebody drew Adam and Eve and drew Eve with an um, 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 umbilical cord and Adam with an umbilical cord. And I said that is not true. Adam and Eve did not have an umbilical cord. Maybe the first children that were born that the thing was cut, 
the cords were cut can have that umbilical cord. But Adam and Eve did not have it. So there's a little difference between we and Adam and Eve. Their, their cord was directly connected to God. Our cord was directly connected to our parents. So, uh, are we here? Uh, uh, are we here? Look at a woman sitting by you and say, are you a help meet or you are help or you are meet? Which one of them? If a man doesn't know what he wants, what he needs, what he requires, how can you look for help? How many of you men have been like this before? Especially married men. Your wife asks you, what will you eat? You say, I don't know. What do you feel like eating? I don't know. But when you get home and there's food, you eat. You don't really know what it is, but you know that you have to eat. Because that is not part of your thinking. Pastor, have you been there before? It's not really part of your thinking. I mean, there's a lot to think about. Food is the least. All you know is that when you get home, you must eat. And woe unto the house. If you step there and there is no food because you said that you don't know. You said that you don't know because you think that is not part of your thinking. Now, again, if we all understand this thing that a woman is to help a man. Now, let me ask this thing that how do women fall in love? How did, how will Abigail marry a fool? I'm, I can tell you why Abigail married that man. He liked the man because later on, if you read the Bible, he knew that the man was brutish, mean, and a fool. And he told everybody he met that my husband is a fool. Can you imagine a woman who keeps telling everybody that my husband is a fool, but you are still married to the woman? Okay, who can tell me why I began married Naba? He was a good businessman. He was a rich man. A man's beauty is your cash. I didn't say a man's handsomeness. So. Let me say this. I've said it before. Women don't love money. But they want to make sure that the man they are marrying has money to secure them tomorrow. Now, I used not to understand this till I had a child. I, I, I used not to. I remember years ago, I was talking to Mr. Dokicho and Auntie Rose, and I was like, why don't you do this? And they said that they always have to leave money in the house. I said, why? Why do you have to always leave money in the house? I don't see why. Me, I can be there. I'll chop all my money. God will provide tomorrow. <laughs> oh, it's true. I can clear all my accounts, and I'm working alone. And I know that if even there's no food, my wife will understand. We will leave. But that little child doesn't understand you and your God. When he think, nah. Baby food must arrive. And you can't say that I'm going to the bank to clear money. You must have money in the house to provide at that immediate moment. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. So I realize that if a woman gives birth and you, the man, to be very frank, there is no future with you financially. You become very ugly. Can I say something? Right. When a woman is about to deliver and they take in the hospital and they say, this hospital is better. Say, and the man me, I can't pay. How would your wife see you? Uh, wait, 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 wait. They say, due to what you have done to the woman, they have to take her to this emergency to get this kind of, they be a scan, today this, tomorrow that, tomorrow this. The woman looks at you and says,
You, you like that tongue? Every time it's can. Is it, is it her fault that every time it's can? <laughs> you, know, you know why you, what you are doing right now? You are portraying your poverty very well. You are really portraying your frustration. And this woman looks at herself and says, Hey, of course, I have no value in my house. No, we see Nabal to be a fool, but ask every woman, and they will tell you that there are times they see their husband to be very, very foolish. Oh, woman, you say it's true. Look at a single stocking. <laughs> Married woman, have you seen your husband sometimes be very foolish before? Don't answer me. Who brought you to say it? Okay. That, that is another problem with Abigail and Nabal. That made Nabal a fool. There were things that Abigail knew that Nabal did not know. And we'll come to that. I repeat it. Every man, and this thing is a serious statement. It's a serious statement. So quote it down. Every man who has been married for at least five to six years to seven, and you are still poor, find out there's something wrong with your wife. Okay, I'll break it down. Or better still. No, there's something wrong with your wife. <laughs> now, last week or last week, I was telling you that a, woman has, a man has power and a woman has influence. Influence is what a woman uses to enable the man to do what he even doesn't want to do. He that findeth a man he that findeth a husband, he that findeth a wife, finds, number one, a good thing, number two, and obtains favor from the Lord. So if I marry you and I'm not breaking through, you see the women are quiet now. It's likely you didn't find a good one, so you don't have the favor. I repeat, even Nabal the fool wanted a good woman. And I repeat it, a man, no matter how foolish you are, look for a good woman. Why is that? The feminist mentality people are not clapping. You know they are feminist mentalists. <laughs> oh, amen. amen. Oh, amen. amen. I, mean, I, I know where I'm coming from, so I know my marriage. It has really been very successful, very beneficial to me. <coughs> One day, my wife said something to me. And that's why we were able to buy the land for, um, how do you call it, um, our university. She called me one day and said, you always preach and you always say that if you are left in a room with a pen and paper, you write a book. I said, yes. I said, are you waiting to be in that place before you write a book? And she left. That was a blank statement. I was going and I was thinking, what is this woman saying? And all that she's saying is that it's a long time you wrote a book. So write a book. That's all. So I went writing a book. And I got money. We want to buy a land. So, so you see, a woman should have the ability to push the buttons in a man's destiny. Hear me. That is why any man who succeeds and say that I did it alone without my wife, you are a big fool. You are number. You are a big fool. That's some way a woman can.
can look at the man and say, you useless man. And when the man is going home, going to town, he's working. Useless man. And so he has not bought a land yet. Neither has he bought a car or a bicycle because the womb says he is useless. Most men who are impotent is not because they cannot function. A woman told them something it is in the brain. So whenever they meet a woman, they know that oh, I play on board game. Washa, pa, 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 pa. So whenever they meet a woman, or they know that that woman said, I don't play game well. I'm a useless thing. And it is a seed that is in the man's head. And woe unto if he gets a woman who will make him play a good game and tell him that you were a good game player. I will tell you why David married Abigail later. Let me end. <laughs> they said I should close early today because of Ziggurat. <laughs> How many more minutes? Okay, let me go on a little bit. Look at a woman sitting by you and they say, can you help me? And what the woman say? Okay, say, okay, okay, say, if a man say, thank you for the, your help. But can you meet me at my help? You see, the meet at help, meet at help, the word meet is a compromise position. The word meet is a, com everybody can help you, but nobody can go to the extreme of help. It's not every woman who can go to the extreme of help. Men, that's why you have to be careful. When a woman starts using her school fees to give you food to eat, you are in trouble. She's gone beyond help to meet you at your point of need. And that is somebody who's trying to tell you, can we marry? Help me, oh, I don't have money. Oh, please do something. Okay, I will see. And this lady sells a jewelry. Goes to even borrow money from somewhere. That is more than help. That is not help. Her reputation, her destiny, her everything was at stake. And any woman who can't Years ago, when I was suffering in Malam, I'll never forget, my wife, even though was in Legon, was working, was selling second-hand clothes at Malam, mm. at the junction mm. that you pass to come to church, mm. for people to see and buy some to take care of the house. Today, if she tries, maybe I'll say no. But she was doing it. I had a shop, small, I, do, I won't call it shop, I'll call it not even container. Not if, no, kiosk is even better. Thank you. Chobos. A big Chobos. No, you are right. It was a big Chobos. You are not there, but you saw it. Today's woman will not move into a Chobos to push a man to the top. But When there is no food in the house and a woman will carry a bowl on top of her head and go to town and bring sell granite and come back home with something. Such a man, if you misbehave, you are under a curse. Because not every woman is your woman. It's your woman who will do this for you. A woman will not do this for you.
Can I end now? These days, all our ladies know is makeup, hair gear. I repeat it. Naba was a fool, but had an intelligent and beautiful wife. Is this message more for the men or for the women? I don't know who. Here is David. Let me give you a story. Here is David. Here is David. A man whose mentor just died. His spiritual father just died. The one who ordained him to be king instead. And he has not yet fulfilled. He was thinking that that man would be alive to be the one to ordain him, to make him the first king of Israel. And yet the man is dead. And he was mourning. And then for the first time, because of that, now Saul has a lean way to finish you. Because the one who would have told Saul, stop what you are doing, is also gone. The one who have fought for, for, your, for you against your enemy Saul, your, 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 the one you, you want to take over. Every man has an ambition to be better. Any man who does not have an ambition is not yet a man. Every, every, men like race. Men like competition. But they are all boys. Men like competition. So here is David. He has to overtake. He has a target. He has to sit in the throne of Saul, the king. And Saul is putting him down, trying to kill him. The one he can take solace from is dead, Samuel. He, everybody's mourning. And he now has to go into a wilderness. Gets into a wilderness. And in the wilderness, he meets a man at the uh, wilderness of Camel, whose name is Naba. And David is like someone like me. He doesn't ask for things. He, he, he's taking care of a man's sheep. And that is the place that the, the, the other people will come and steal the gold, steal the sheep. But David takes care of this man's sheep and gold. He, he manages it. He takes care of it. He doesn't ask for anything. One day, he's there and he heard that, oh, this man is Christmas. He's sharing his goods for all those who have helped him in life. So David writes a sponsorship letter in our modern day terminology and sends it to 10 of his people that go and give it to this great man and tell him that I am David. I am nothing today. But by the grace of God, someone who died poured oil on me and said I will be king. But today I am poor. Today I have nothing. And tell this man that as he shared his good, at least he give us something small so that we too, we have about 600 men who can get something to eat. When the thing came, Abigail was not there. They came, the people went and they showed him directly to Nabal. Nabal quoted and said, these days, every man has a dream. Everybody says you will make it. Everybody says she is that. Everybody says is that. Let me use the other version that the, it says that, like every, that they say in Ghana. Everybody starts a business. Before you know this one to ask, who is David? Who is his house? If I'm sharing, you see, Nabal did not appreciate the good work of David. So David and his men were there waiting that, oh, we are jubilating, we are going to get something. Only for David to be told that the man says, you are nothing. I can't help you. I can't assist you. So David gets angry, pick his 600 men, and he said that, I am going to kill everybody in the house. I'm going to destroy everybody in the house and take the goat and sheep. I will murder. I will kill. And that is where two men are going to make a choice. We are seeing who will win Abigail. One has already held on to Abigail. Let's assume that both of them were not married to Abigail. But one was completely engaged and was already in the 
household of Nabal. And hear me, sometimes men, certain decisions we make is also a reason why we fail. Why did Nabal make this decision without consulting Abigail? Because Nabal does not respect the view of the help meet. Any man who does not respect the view of a help meet, you don't have help. I, I like to do it this way. I like to listen. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, we'll see what we can do. Maybe two years, I've not done it, but I listen. And then maybe after a while, I do it. And sometimes it will be said, I told you you didn't do it, but maybe someone else can tell you. Maybe the difference between it, when you told me, it was good you told me, but the time you told me wasn't right. But at least you told me. And I'll tell you something here. Any woman who keeps silent for her husband to be destroyed is a questionable woman. I've not gotten there yet, but that is something to put in your coconut before I get there. So somebody had a lead and came to tell the servant of Nabal that, hey, David and his men are coming. They are coming to kill all of you. Hear me. The servants, I wish as I'm going, they can be giving you the story on the screen. The servants did not go to their boss. They went to Abigail. And you know what they told their boss? They told Abigail, they said, I will know that your husband is a fool. How can you be in a house, man, and you are not connected to the people you, who are working with you. And hear me. The, we can find in so many homes where the man is not connected to the workers. And the wife is also not connected to the workers. Mm. If both of you are not connected, then you are in doom. The wisdom of Abigail is that even though he saw that the husband was mean, the husband was not good, and the husband was like this and like that, she took it to herself to relate to the people of low esteem. She didn't let the money and the fame get into her and make her feel like they are not my class. <laughs> Most women get to a certain level and money and fame gets into their head. And, and boss is talking to them anyhow. Director is talking to them anyhow. Pastor is talking to them. My husband is the CEO. He can talk to anybody anyhow. Yes, he does that, but you can't. You should not. Should I continue here? Why are you quiet? <laughs> you see, sometimes, you see, while the man is firing, the woman is so firing, and this one is so firing. I, I, I had a case where somebody went to steal in a company, and I happened to be a board in that company. So the, the, the CEO or the owner of the business decided that he's taking the people to jail. He's going to make sure they are, they are jailed. And he called me. And I said, you can't do that. I said, you want to do that. He said, I will do it. And I said, then why did you call me? You can't do that. He said, you are just a board member. I said, yes, but I have a say. You can't do that. And he said, I should give you a reason why he can't do that. I said, listen, let's assume that the people are ignorant. Let's assume that they were ignorant. And you, the head of the company, you send them to the police station and they are jailed. Who would they appeal to? But if you let your subordinate take the case to the police station and they are put behind bars, at least they will come to you and appeal to you and say, the boss, this is our side of the story. And you hear it. But when it is you who is doing it, how can they come to you and tell you the other side of the story? Say, ah, I hear. You see, the wisdom of Abigail was that whereas the husband was a... You see, that shows you that the husband's business was successful not because he was a successful man, but because Abigail was the one who was relating to the people who were really doing the work. Uh, 
A woman's human relationship must be vivid, strong, and bold. Oh, are you sure you've gone home? Oh, you don't like what I said? Why didn't the servants go to their boss? Of course. Let, let's read something. 14. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he really he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us. Look at the truth that is coming out. The people who were working knew how David had been helping. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt. Neither miss we anything. As long as we were covenant with them when we were in the field. They were a wall unto us by night and by day. All the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Most of you listen. There are things, hear me, there are things that a man doesn't know. A woman doesn't know in a man's business that the people who work know. Let me use this as, a, as, a, as church. There are things that I will not know. There are things that my wife would not know. A lot of things I get to know is the people I relate to who let me know. Paul, one day in First Corinthians, said that it has been commonly reported among you that there is dispute among you. He said, the house of Cleo says that there is dispute among you. Who told Paul that there was dispute? It's because Paul had a personal relationship with the members in the church who could come and tell him what was going on in the church. Now, so these people were the ones who were going to tell Abigail, Abigail, listen, this man is a good man. We can't do this to him. They were a war unto us both by night and day. And all the while we were with them um, keeping the ship. Now, therefore, no. Listen, listen to what the servant told Abigail. No. And consider what you will do. For evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is he, he such a son of Balaam. That a man cannot speak about. Listen, listen, everybody read it. Read it around. That a man, I like the way they put their man there, cannot speak to him. You see, had the man was such a mean man that a man cannot speak to him, but a woman can speak to him. He <laughs> said, a man can, that's what I said. Me, as well tell Reverend Yali, that fool. <laughs> Me, yeah, woe unto you if the people can't do it to you, and they can't do it to your. Then who would it? If if the servants did not know what was going to take place, I'm sure the whole house of Abigail would have been destroyed. Now, here is a woman, Abigail, who got to know that even the servants knew that their boss was an idol worshiper. They said, he's the son of a Gonsamba. Our boss is the devil's incarnate. He said, no man can speak to him. Daba was the kind of man that doesn't listen to anybody's advice. He doesn't listen to anybody. Do you know a man like that? But yet, he had an Abigail wife. No man can speak to him. The servant even knew that the only person who can speak to Naba was a woman. No man. Hear me. My question to every woman here is this. If you, you are married to a man and you have sex with a man and you can't talk to the man, there is something wrong to you as a woman. Why are you all quiet like that? Your, your feelings is controlling your thinking. I've had issues that people come to me and say that, and my wife is like this. My wife is like that. So do something. And I said to them, before I would do anything, which mother do you use to con the woman? 
Which mouth did you use to tell the woman to sleep with you and the woman's left you? Which mouth did you use to say that let's go and get weather and the person told, go and use that same mouth? To talk to the woman and I'll come in. And most often, I don't come in. Because, <laughs> oh, are you here you've gone home? Hey, are you sure you are here? Those of you sleeping, wave your hands. Those of you sleeping. If you are sleeping, then you are too young. Look at somebody say, do you know a man that nobody can speak to? Do you know that our grandmothers used to say it? I never heard my mom saying it to me, but I'm sure most of you have heard that statement before. Wake your husband up at midnight and talk. How many have heard that statement before? What kind of talk is that? God made men in this way that after men are tired and they work so hard in the evening, they get to bed, they sleep. But at midnight, the Lord wakes us up. And when the Lord wakes us up, something in the inside begins to work on the outside. And that is when you're a woman and you wake up and you see the man. He said that he has turned flat on the bed. But if he's facing up, you see that there is a boil growing up. Discuss it with him. Yes, yeah, speak in tongues. <laughs> then you two are there. Huh? Uh-huh. I'll mind you. I'll mind you. You. I'll mind you. <laughs> the Lord is giving you a sign and a wonder. A miracle is happening in your bedroom. And God is giving you a sign and you are not receiving it. Blessed are they that believe for they shall receive. But that is baby to the wife. And do you know that God made it in such a way that when a man wants sex, everything can go on hold. Everything is on hold. So that is where the woman influence begins. Sweetheart, have you considered this business? Oh, what are you talking about? He wants everything sharp, short, and brief. So that he can quickly finish his assignment. So there is not long talk. Shorthand. I'm sure maybe Wednesday you get more upon on that front of now. That is when men sign serious checks. Thank you. But if you are not careful, you have a smart man like me, the signature will be wrong. Just by the way. <coughs> oh, amen. Where was I? <laughs> the wrong signature. That is just by the way. Oh, amen. But interestingly, yeah, I mean, interestingly, most people can communicate. And hear me, I began got to know. And this is not the only time in the Bible. When God told, um, is it Rebecca? Yeah? Rebecca, that there are two nations in your womb. The younger shall serve the younger and so on. The, the, the younger shall, uh, the elder shall serve the younger and so on. 
The Bible said he couldn't communicate with his wife, um, the husband Isaac. There was a communication gap. So the woman kept it until Isaac was about to make a mistake, laying the hand on the wrong son. He had to use Wagadre and tricks to get it because there was a communication problem between Isaac and the wife. Hello? In the Bible, I can give you a lot of things that people did and they couldn't tell. Abraham could not tell Sarah about Isaac. Communication again. That means that communication is a major key for any relationship to become successful. And the devil can affect and fight the communication of every relationship. That could be the end of that relationship. <laughs> Sometimes what most people are angry about, if the two of you will sit down and talk, there will be nothing to be angry about. But the pride and the arrogance and whatever will not end and let anybody talk. And a good woman is the one who will see that it is time for the weightier matters of the Lord. And the Lord gives here a sign at midnight and sees the sign. You don't clap. You will get there. Where was I? Now, therefore, you are bad. <laughs> now, therefore, know and consider that thou would do for evil. You see, the servant did not, I can't, 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 just imagine, the servant did not tell Abigail what to do. He couldn't. That is a wise woman. You see, if the servant had told Abigail what to do, the Abigail would be a foolish woman also. Abigail received the information, and the servant said, we know you know what you will do. But your husband doesn't know what to do. In other words, every time there was a business crisis, Nabal did not know what to do. Listen, women are a great gift to men. Let us handle them well. They are a gift. They are a treasure. Oh, none of you will clap. Even the women will not clap. Look at a woman she said by you and say, know what you should do. A woman who, who, that, who is not told what to do. I said, when, the, when you see the anointing service happen at 3 midnight, you should know what to do. We know something about women. They, we know women easily hear and they believe. Men will take a lot of time raising, calculated. If, if you have a woman who is like a woman of understanding and a beautiful countenance, that's why the King James said, Abigail had understanding and a beautiful countenance. A woman of understanding will hear information and will know what to do. Look at someone, what do you do? I didn't hear you. Ask a woman, sister, what do you do when your business, your husband's business is going down? And that a woman, I know you know what to do. Look at a woman and say that if you don't know what to do, I'm looking for my woman. You are a woman. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a mighty clap of faith. I know that evil is determined against our master and against his household, for he's such a son of Belial. That a man cannot speak to him. Eight, and Abigail made haste. I like the word haste. This is a woman who has his house in order. And that character of a godly woman. Her house was in order. Let's read. She made haste and took 200 loaves, two bottles of wine, five sheep ready dressed, ready dressed, five measures of parched corn, and 100 cloths of raisins, and 200 cakes of figs, and laid them on asses. Now, this is a woman who knows her home. Hear me. Three days ago, is it three, four days ago, my in-law visited me. They came from the States, and they said, where is the guest washroom? 
to very frank, I was lost. I had to go to the kitchen and ask my wife, where do you get that dress? Did she know? I don't know. I said, there it is. Oh, okay. Good. You see, if you're a woman and you don't know your home, a man will come and say, where is my shoe? Brother Charles, are you here? And nobody said, do I wear that shoe with you? <laughs> or oh, another thing the woman will answer, where did you put it the last time? Master, if I knew it, I wouldn't even be asked. Yeah. Where is my shaving machine? <laughs> do, you know the, do you know the joy of um, okay, wait. How many of you watch this movie? My little girl has made me watch it now. Um, kung kung bajia, kung 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 kung. Do you know that Abby or whatever didn't like the the so-called wife, but he can't live without a lady. Without a lady, say, where's my this? Where's my that? Where's my that? Where? It's like the woman knows where to put everything. And I'm telling any woman who comes to that man's life will never survive. Most men hardly know where they put their things. Even where they put their dress, they don't know. Oh, you think I'm lying? A man can be there. Oh. Let me tell you this, especially those of you who are secretaries. Let me tell you that proof to you that sometimes men forget where they put their brain. Go to town, do this, do that, do that. And then you go and you're, you go and do it. But I didn't tell you to do that. What you brought is wrong. How many of you have had that thing before? You forgot what he said. So I tell people, when your boss is talking, take a pen and a paper. As he's talking, you write. When if he say, did you say A, this, B, this? He say, I didn't say that for B. He said, okay, what did you say? Let me write it down. Mm. What? Oh, I, I'm not sure what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you're not careful, you say, go and do this, go and do this. I, I have that issue. I, I, I can be there and I have to give this person money, I have to give this money. I, I'm there, I'm working. Now, they said, Daddy, he's no, I said, I mean, I've done it already. I've done it. Said, ah. Then the only person I'll go and look for is Pastor David. Pastor David said, Daddy, it's not true. You've not done it. You, you see, we were about to do it on this day, around this time, and you had this call, and you stepped out, and you didn't finish it. I said, oh, okay. Now I come back. I forgot my brain. Most of the women allow themselves to become so busy that they forget their home. Let me tell you this. Let the world take everything from a woman. But women, don't let the world take you away from your home. You can do business. You can go to town. You can take care of the children. But let home be home. Because if the man can come home, you still have the man. But if he can't come home, <laughs> look at, look at, you see, a, a wise woman is the one whose husband gets into trouble and the Bible says, and in haste, he got it. She has expressing trouble, no. But in haste, she got it. In haste, she got it. In haste, she got it. In haste. She got it. How many women have the character of Abigail? That can wake up in the time of emergency. David and his men are coming for your house. What do you do? Prayer warriors. Where's Reverend Yale's number? You are calling me. Wait. Before I arrive, they have arrived. Let me tell you this. Okay, let, give me the next verse. And, and she said unto her seven, Go on before me, 19. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband, Naba. She did not tell her husband. That means that there's a lot of things she was doing behind the scenes to make the husband successful that the husband did not know. Woman, it's not everything you do for your husband that you must say. You are expected to do it. 
should do it. Whatever I Whatever you also have to do, do. But today I'm talking about women. Look at him. Women, the next thing I'll tell you is this. Never take the battle in your home. Take the battle outside your home. Abigail left the house. She could have waited for David and his men to arrive. He left the house and made the servants go before him to go and try and speak to David as he's also on his way. That madame is coming. Oh, madame, madame, there is good. He's coming. You know something? Most women wait for the battle to start happening in their house before they start fighting. We call it the fire service approach. When the fire catches the house, they say, hey, sweetheart, I love you. Sweetheart, hey. Stop that nonsense. You should have been sweethearting long ago. And I keep saying this. I keep saying this. I keep saying this. And women, hear me. Something has turned, which is not good. Christ is the man, isn't it? Is he not a man? And he's coming to marry with the church, who is the woman. True of us. Now, who gives the other worship? Do we, as the church, give God worship or God gives us worship? So, as marriage is comparable to the church, women who worship their husbands who have their home together, most women want the men to worship them. Call them sweet words. Sweet baby. Sweet honey. Sweet darling. Sweet uh, sweet that. That one is for when you are about to marry. When you marry, the woman must give the worship to the man. When the man is about to propose, he goes down. Would you marry me? That is your last bow down. You are still waiting for the man to bow. Did you hear the story? Have you heard the story? That's a woman said that when they were dating, the man was always buying pizza and coke. Now that they finished dating, he stopped and he said, that, have you seen that when politicians are campaigning, they give gifts? After they vote for them, do they give gifts? <laughs> ah, they, When politicians are campaigning, they bring bentria. They, they bring basins. Outboard motors. They give watches. Their children serve watches and everything. I mean, they give everything. Yeah, they give money. But after they vote, they will even visit you again. Work is done. But the problem with most women is that they marry and they expect their husband to steal. Let me use the word crawling. Craw I listened to a story years ago. One day I will let you watch it. Especially those of you who are getting into ministry. I do that once in a while for you. TDJ's my help, my house is on fire. I have his video. And they were interviewing TDJ's wife. And TDJ's wife was, they were like, how come you have a, such a busy husband? We're able to maintain him. You know what TDJ's wife said? He said, my husband is very troublesome. He doesn't have time. And he said when the church was growing, he was expecting that TDJs would have time for him, for her. Because she TDJs have time for a lot of the women in the church. So she was expecting that when she has finished having time for other women, he will have time for her. So he said she will sit down and wait for the husband. When the husband finished, he said, Sarah, let's go. So he said, I went to God, and God told her, when your husband works, by the time she gets home, she's giving all she has. He has nothing left in him. It is your turn to give to him. <laughs> the man has given all. Hugging this person. Those who are smelling, they hug them. Those who are, who don't, they hug. Do, 
must, as a pastor, you must know. You must be nice to everybody. Hello. Sometimes I'm driving. Somebody say, hello, I wave. I look back. It's not me. They are waving somebody. <laughs> and, and if I don't wave, but the person says, the pastor is arrogant. He doesn't like, he doesn't like anybody. So I wave. And I look back. And the person, I wave. The person says, eh. I look back. It's not me. It's somebody else. You are giving, you are responding to this, you are giving to that, you are giving to this. By the time you get home, you are, you are out of it. So he said that when the children was growing, what he began to do was that he told the children that daddy is coming. Daddy is tired, I'm going to spend time with daddy. And so all of the children being in the house, I spend time with you, it's time for daddy. And he said when he, the husband comes, he has time for him. And after he has had time for the man in the morning, she will also quell in her bed. And then the husband will come and say, hello. Are you tired? Now the husband has strength to relieve. But when the man is empty, who fills in the gap? A woman who can fill in the gap for a man is called help meet, not help. <laughs> can I end now? Maybe I can end there. Eh? Oh, uh, I thought you were there. Growing up, my mom taught me something. When you are eating, when you go out and eat, leave a space for my food. Can I tell you all this, married people, no matter how tired you get, Leave a space for your husband. You are too quiet. I'm telling you. <laughs> telling you, pa. Abigail allowed her servants to go forward. A wise woman knows what servants have to do and knows what she has to do. It is not everything that a servant must do. Most people get maids and the maids do everything they need to have to do. Maids did not marry your husband. You did. And there are things nobody should do for your husband. The following. Cooking. Washing. And anything that is personal to the man, nobody is supposed to do it in the house apart from him. Abigail could have given the food and everything and stayed back. After all, is it not food they want? Go and give it to them. It's not a wise woman. There is something, I always tell people about this, about communication. If you ask me to go to Pastor Charles to ask for a job for you at Pastor Charles' business, I can call Pastor Charles on phone and I'll say, Charles, get this guy business. Say, Daddy, eh, I'll see. But if I say, Pastor Charles, let's meet in the office and we are meeting face to face, it's difficult for Pastor Charles to say no. Because at that junction, we are communicating. Abigail knew that it is one thing for me to send. And it's one thing for me to be there personally. <laughs> Can I tell you this? Can I tell you this? Most people allow maids to cook and serve their husbands. And they are sleeping. Because the man brings money home, you two also bring money. So we all bring money. You, but even though you all bring money. Can I say this? Your money as a woman belongs to the man. The day Listen, the day you decide to marry a man is the day you are saying that 
you are subletting all your vision, your purpose to that man. Most of the women grow or uh, become come to a level and say, me to have my own. You don't. And that is the beginning of division in homes. And that is, look, most men of God whose marriages broke down, it was because the husband had a vision and the woman had a vision. I don't mention names because we are alive on earth. From Ghana to Nigeria to America. Abigail said, Servants, go in front of me. I am coming. I'll be there personally. Can I go on? You don't like my preaching. It's good for the men. Verse 20. And it was so as she rode on the ass, she came down by the covert of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her. Against her. And she met them. Servants, move aside. This man is coming. David, he doesn't know that I am married to a fool. I have handled a rich fool. So a poor fool is no trouble for me. Servants, stay back. Abigail was standing there. If the servant had met David first, David would have thought it is war. So David would have slaughtered them. But when he met only a woman first, every man, there is something in you when a woman appeals to you. I said, a woman, my woman, at this stage, she is a woman. Very soon, she will be David's dead. Her woman. This woman. And there are characters you build, women, that makes man see you as a marital material. And I'm giving you some free. He met David. And the speed of the horse, the articulator truck, every bomb, Every ballistic missile that David was coming with stopped because of Abigail's presence. And I keep telling you that when a man wants to go to war, he uses missiles, gun. But a woman wants to go to war, she uses her ties as Delilah. To capture something, they couldn't. The last said, Leave her for me. When I talk to you about the character of, I always say that I'm not being the character of Delilah, even though it works negative, women must use it in a positive way. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Amen. Amen. I can't hear you. 21. Yeah. Now, David has said, listen, you know, this was the mind of David. Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow have in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained on him. And he has requited me even for good. So, the more, so and more also do God unto the enemies of David. If I, have, if I live of all that pertained to him by the morning light, any that pissed against the wall. Hear me. What was David was saying that by morning, by morning, Everybody in Naba's house was going to die. May God give you, if you are not married, a woman who will not allow anything of yours to be destroyed. Yeah. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted. Wait. First, she hastened. To get the food. To get the things for David with speed. But when she saw the speed at which David was coming with, 
she slowed down. Woman, when your husband is angry, cool down, calm down, cool down. And every girl saw David and she hasted and alight. The word hasted doesn't mean she was going speed. What it means is that she calmed down. David is coming with speed. I was also coming with speed. I also was coming with speed. You are coming with speed to kill me. I'm also coming with speed to appease you. But hear me. What I need to do first is I calm down. So, listen, if somebody's coming with speed, and you see the person slows down, the psychology is this. The person who is also coming with speed will also slow down because you also slow down. If the person sees that you also come with speed, both of you will come with speed. And the one who has the um, friend saying that nah, the power will win. And David would have won this battle. But Abigail determined the pace of the battle by her mentality. A wise woman will determine the pace of every battle in her womb, home. If you say one, I will say two. Try me. You know you're right. As soon as Abigail saw David. Most often, it will surprise you sometimes the people, the men, that men choose. And sometimes some women get amazed. But sometimes, some of these women, they're able to cool the men in a way nobody has ever cooled them. Have you heard a man say to a woman that when you talk, then there's a peace within my heart? Have you, how many of you women have heard a man say that to you before? If you have not had a woman, a man say that to you, woman, then please, come for deliverance. When you talk, it's like a man of peace. When you talk. Abigail hasted. Amen. And did what? When in verse what? And Abigail saw David, he hasted and lighted up the eyes and fell before David. What else did she do? She lied flat. Listen to me. Everybody hear me. The Bible says a woman must submit to her own husband. But hear me. I, I, are, there, are there women in the house? Let the woman shout yes. yes. Let every woman shout yes. yes. Hear me. Every man, the key to his heart is not food. They say it's food. But every man, the master key is respect. I can be never a fool, but please respect me. Respect my foolishness. When she saw David, she was flat on the floor. Now, what will you do? Will you pass over her? That is humility. Most women don't know that men are watching the way you talk to other people. That is not your husband, just a friend, but you talk behind. What sit there? What? What do you mean? Are you my class? No. We can be classmates, but not grace mates. Thank you. Boy, yeah. Sometimes you are, you are in car. You are in car. Beautiful lady. You are in car. Taxi, trot, trot. And someone calls you. One first man, you feel me. So I am a young, foolish boy. And the people... Men, have you seen a woman like that in a car? How do you see them? And say... Pastor, no man is coming. The one that God sent in the truck, truck ran away. <laughs> you even 
you say, oh, hello. Please, I can't really hear you, so can you please call me back? Missy, Mintenoti. Can't you jump in a swiss? Nobody's in the car today, you know. Ah! Make my food be so I can't frame it. Make my poor. Listen to me. You don't know that the David that you are about to meet is a potential husband to be. Okay, one day I'll teach you about a strange woman. I've taught it before, but one day I'll teach it. Strange woman. Characters of a strange woman. One of the characters of a strange woman is that they talk loudly. They can be here and they are talking. We hear them at the junction. A woman must always have a soft tone in speaking, no matter the condition. It's not about the China food. It is anger. The mentality is that the person they are talking to is too far away. So they need to shout for the person to hear. But the person is on the phone. <laughs> Anger is like a wall. That makes you see people too far away from you. So you feel the more you shout, the more they will hear you. But it's not true. The Bible says, and a soft answer, that's what it pacifies. It clears away evil. A soft answer, soft Look at a lady sitting by, a guy sitting, a lady, a guy, see a lady sitting by and say, please, it's women's time. Can I tell you something? Tell them. Please speak softly. It is very romantic. And stop as that turn it away, rough. But what grievous words stir up according to food in that? He's meeting you at a high speed. You two say, Oh, die, be die. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm tired, though. Me at this stage, I don't care. Anything happens, should happen. I'm coming. Wait. Anger lies in the bosom of fools. Ask every woman who has been married for a long time. They will tell you that their husband is a fool. I'm telling you. The husband thinks the wife is a fool. But the truth is that the woman sees the husband to be a big fool. But just that the woman is so wise to handle such a big fool. Woman, is it true? Your husbands are here, so you are shy. The woman will tell you that. Me pese me jana. Kame jana is that. Most women who married and they left their marriage, especially when we were young, look back and if they knew what they knew today, they would still be married. Ah. Beauty with no brain. Just that people put a lot of pounds to enhance their brain. People just fake internal beauty. But if you fake eternal beauty, by morning, when you bath, it will be washed away. Your real beauty will appear. If you fake that you are beautiful inside, it's a matter of time. You will see who you are. This man, I didn't want to talk about womanhood. I didn't want to. 
I just wanted to preach on, but at least let me do one woman for today. Because I've been doing that. It's a woman's man, but it's not. She fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground. 24. And fell at his feet and said, up, and said listen to a wise woman. Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. And let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thy audience. And hear the words of thy handmaid. What, they, what is he saying? Don't blame anybody, it's my fault. A foolish woman is the one who tells the world the fault of the husband. He said, it is my fault. I didn't do my work well. I should have been there. When they came, I wasn't there. If I was there, this thing would never happen. I just missed, I think I was in the washroom. Upon me! I'm responsible. For the, you know, my husband, he was going to, he was going to say, my husband is very foolish. Everybody knows that. I mean, I mean, everybody in the town knows that this is my husband's behavior. But every time this thing happens, I'm there to, you know, solve issues. But that time, I, I said the success of Naba was because of the beauty, internal and the external beauty of the wife. There's nothing good about Naba. Listen, woman, you are looking for Mr. Perfect, eh? Please, woman, you are the perfect beings. Mm. One day, Benny Hinn was on the stage doing miracles. Do, 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 do. When after service, they asked one of his children, how was the service? He said, when my daddy mounts the stage, I get shocked. He's not the same person in the house. Because when the anointing comes upon the man of God, he's a different person. Why are you looking at me like that? I can preach more, but it's time. Let me close. You're all looking at him. Must we have a dead Okay, let me do a little. Upon me and upon me, let this iniquity and be. And I have made, I pray thee, speak in, to the audience. Power chalk. Let me speak to you. You see, what a soft answer turned away rap. The way this woman spoke to David. Very soon, you know what he's going to make David? He's going to make David feel so guilty, eh? You know what he told David? Let's read. He said, Let not five. Let not, my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Baal. Even Naba, for us his name is so easy. Naba is his name, and folly is with him. But I, the high made son, not the young man of my Lord, whom thou sent. I wasn't there. The secret of every successful man is a woman. And please, may it be a wife. Most often, it is not a wife. But it should have been a wife. Can we go on? Where's verse was I? By I, the high many saw not a young man of thy Lord whom thou didst send. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord have withholding thee from coming to shed blood. Listen, go, can you tell David that, David, if you kill us, you are a murderer. That's a woman. He's just making David realize that you are about to commit a sin you don't need to commit. You can't have blood on your hands. Let's not forget, later, God told David. That the reason why you can't build a temple is that you have a lot of bloodshed on your hands. One of the people, if David had married Eli, would have been able to succeed in building the temple, not Solomon, was Abigail. But he met Abigail too late.
if your wife is not here, get one for him. Hey, you are here. And vice versa. You buy some of this message and go and give it to anybody you know. Anybody. He told David. She told David, David, you see, I'm leaving there and begging you. I want you to consider your conscience. If you kill these people because of food, because of food, David, anger is making you going to take this step because of food. This shows the kind of counsel this woman has been giving to her husband. Told David that you are about to commit murder. Not one. A whole family. Bloodshed cannot be on your hands, my Lord. He appealed to the conscience of David. A woman who appeals to the conscience of a man will always have the man in his bosom. I don't have time. So the long and short of it is that he gave the fruit to David. David was at peace. And if you read on, 36, and Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, 36, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. The guy was rich. Whilst the husband, wife was busy making sure things will work, the man was partying. Listen, men, don't think your success is because of you, only you. There are women who are always behind the scenes. Sometimes you can be enjoying the money. Why are you quiet? This man was and the wife was doing business transaction. Coming down tempest. A wise woman knows when to enjoy and when to wait. Let me go on. And he came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king, and Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore, she told him nothing, less or more until the morning light. A wise woman knows how not to cut the flow of a man. A wise woman knows how not to cut the flow of a man. You have something to say. Hold on. Let me finish. Abigail read the story and realized that the husband is no mood for the news of what he has done. Kept it. So the following day. Can I say this? Sometimes you get tired. Man, have you been there before? I, I don't have that, but have you been there before? When you get tired, and let's say you go home, and as soon as you enter the house, hey, how crazy? Bill be a dear back to how? Please, so couldn't you ask me, how was the work? How was town? Can't you get me water to freshen up? Can't you get me food to eat? Can't you wait? Whatever you are about to tell me, can't you wait and let me settle down before you tell me? See me doesn't mean you must tell me everything. So sometimes there is a man. He wants to go home. But he doesn't want to go home. Because when he gets home, the things he will see and hear, he's already tired. He will sleep somewhere else. Read about a nagging wife in the Bible. A nagging wife is like a man sleeping in a house with holes on top of the roof. And when it rains, water is coming in. You can't sleep. Abigail was a good communicator. She waited. When a husband had finished all the partying and his heart was in the morning, they told him that, Mira, yesterday you did another mistake. You are about to be killed. 
but I did this. I don't know whether the husband was going to insult her, was going to beat her, was going to say, I'm sorry, but the Bible didn't say it. But the Bible said his heart became like a stone. His heart froze. And then he had stroke. And after 10 days, God took his life away and he died. And when David heard that Napa was dead, a good woman is hard to find. I'll continue one day. That one is another topic. 